Hey, this is Matt from MasterSketchup.com, and in this video, we're going to look at three models that I downloaded from Thingiverse for 3D printing and go over some tips on how to work with cleaning up the models and extracting different parts in order to customize the models that you download. So Thingiverse is a website run by MakerBot where you can search for and download a number of different models that people have created. So let's check out this tape dispenser. So this is a model that somebody created, not necessarily in SketchUp, but any type of modeling program. So typically when you find a model that you like, the first thing you're going to want to do is check out the info to you know get any special tips and also the instructions they'll tell you tips on how to print it out or some different you know problems they might have come across or if it's still a work in progress um, and then you can go and download it so you click on the thing files and there will typically always be the STL file and that's what you that's what's most commonly used for printing with a 3D printer so if you if you liked the um, the model as is, you would be able to download this and send it right to your 3D printing software. But if you wanted to customize it in SketchUp, you can also download this STL and import it into SketchUp. Now you don't want to um, open the file, you want to save it. So just make sure you save it and it'll download to your computer. Now once the file's downloaded, you can't just double click on it to open. You actually have to open SketchUp first and import it from within SketchUp. Now in order to import and export STL files, you need to install the extension. So if you go to Window and Extension Warehouse, you can search for the STL plugin. It actually happens to be the uh, most popular plugin, so you can typically find it right over here. So you just click on that and uh, click install and that'll install the plugin for you. And what that does is it adds a, a menu item here uh, when you go to the import option. You can select STL from the drop down menu in uh, the file type. And from there you can select any STL file and click open. So that'll import it. Now typically if you're working with 3D printed objects, they're going to import relatively small in relationship to your workspace. So I'm just going to delete the uh, the person there and then I'm going to tap Shift Z. And what that does is just the zoom uh, extends. What zoom extends does is it'll uh, change your camera perspective to fit the entire model in the workspace. So this is typically what an STL file looks like when you import it. You see all of the different edges that subdivide the faces or make up any curves. So the first thing that I typically do is I'll soften the edges. So you can just select the group, right click it, select soften smooth edges, and you can adjust the angle um, between normals. So that's uh, to put it in simpler terms, it basically whatever angle you have here is what will determine whether it hides the edge or not. You want to make sure smooth normals and smooth coplanar are checked off so you get the full effect there. Now remember, you don't have to import an STL file into SketchUp in order to print it. You would only import a fi an STL file into SketchUp if you wanted to customize it. So, for instance, if you had this tape uh, dispenser and for some reason you wanted to add a handle to it or you wanted to attach it onto some other cool, you know, object you're printing out so it has like this, a tape measure, uh, <laughs> a tape dispenser attached to it. So this is actually a really clean model. If we go to window and entity info window, we can notice the solid group so there's no broken faces or open edges or stray edges or anything like that so this is a, an example of a really clean import uh, from Thingiverse now that's not always the case for instance I really liked the design of this uh, belt tensioner 
So I downloaded it and imported it into SketchUp and this is what it looked like. So if we do the same thing now sometimes it doesn't uh, your model your STL file won't import as a group so I like to keep everything inside of groups so if I just triple click that and right click it that'll turn it into a group so if I do the same thing and soften edges here that makes it look a little better but if we start to really zoom in here we can see the there are a lot of broken edges here. There are some plugins that might be able to clean up stuff like that. For instance, the cleanup plugin by TomTom. Tom. It has a few different tools in it that'll try to erase straight edges or dupl uh, erase duplicate faces and, and repair split edges as well. But this model in particular is a little bit challenging for a plugin like that. But a lot of times if you're trying to customize a model that you downloaded you can extract the important parts of the design from profiles so for instance if I double click on this I can select this face now notice how we have some um, some broken faces here so we're gonna take care of that later on but first what we'll do is we'll, we'll select this face select this face select this face I'm just holding down the shift key so I can select multiple faces at the same time and then now I'll switch to the move tool with the letter M I'll start the move with a click and then tap control to indicate that I want to make a copy so I just copied these profiles and this is really where all of the important information is um, on the you know on the, the parts that I want to use in in my model now I have a couple of teeth missing here but what I can do is since they're all the same I can just drag a selection box to select these edges here and then grab the move tool and do the same thing hit control to indicate I'm making a copy and copy that over and then I just need to do that one more time so I'm using other points in the model to um, to extract the distances I need. So I'm referencing the distance between this tooth edge and that tooth edge because I know they're all consistent. I mean I'm just I'm guessing that they're all consistent and they, they happen to be. But sometimes you, you're forced to kind of dig in and do these these little manual fixes and then uh, you just need to repair the edges in order for the face to appear again. So I just have the line tool and I'm just clicking two points in the um, I'm just drawing a line over the existing line to uh, bring the face back in and then I can delete those two stray edges so once you have something like this you can use the push-pull tool to you know extrude the profiles that you extracted from the the model that you downloaded so a lot of times you might see a model that has parts or, or designs in it that you want to extract. So for instance, this is a camera mount for a Mendel Max, which is a type of 3D printer, and that's the 3D printer I have. And I really liked how this clip engages with the frame of the 3D printer. So I wanted to download this model and just extract that profile. So we could go through and click on the thing files and download the STL, but sometimes you can get really lucky and the person will actually upload a SketchUp file. You can't see the file extension here, unfortunately, because the name is so long, but this is actually a SketchUp model that you can uh, download. So obviously, if you have the opportunity to download the SketchUp model, that's going to be really advantageous to you because now you can work with the model and extract um, extract profiles however you see fit so typically when I'm doing this I'll select the face I'll make a copy of it and then I'll go in here and just divide the faces in order to extract the part that I want so I can extract actually I only need one of these so I can select that extract it and now I have this clip that I can um, integrate into other models um, that I that I want to work with so I hope you found this video helpful if you want to learn more about SketchUp and 3d printing 
I put a couple of links in the description below. This is my 3D printing plugins for SketchUp recommendation, the Solid Inspector, Round Corner, and the STL Import Export. There's also an article I wrote on design considerations for 3D printing. So this kind of goes over my experience with 3D printing and some things to really pay attention to when you're designing models for the specific purpose of being 3D printed. So you can check those links out in the description below and thanks for watching.